What is up guys, today we are back with another top 5 money making guide with combat for mid levels. You guys loved the last 3 videos I made on this so I decided to make one more because of some new content released into the game. If you have not seen the other 3 videos on this, definitely check those out, the links are in the description. If you enjoy this video, please go ahead and leave a like and definitely subscribe to see more of my content and help us reach 3,500 subscribers. The methods in this video may not be your personal favorite, but these will still make you good money per hour while training combat. If you have any suggestions for other monsters that make good money while training combat, please leave a comment and I'll check them out. I am no longer going to be making mid-level moneymaker guides with combat, but I will be making low-level ones and high-level ones, so leave a suggestion for those as well. Keep in mind, the order of the monsters in this video are in no particular order, and before we start, I want you guys to know my stats. I am using my Slayer ult, and the combat stats are 81 attack, 81 strength, 81 defense, 81 range, 54 prayer, and 55 magic. You definitely do not need these stats to do these monsters, but I have them, and I do these methods easily and pretty efficiently. Now, let's get started into the video. Now, the first method we will be doing is the brand new Undead Druids in the brand new Forthos Dungeon. For this method, there are two ways to do them. You can either A, go through some steps to unlock the best way to make money to do these so you don't use prayer potions, or B, go the lazy way and make decent money with no steps but not make the max amount because you will have to use prayer potions. We will be making the max amount. This is not a guide on how to unlock the best method, but I will quickly show you guys how to make the most money because that is the method we will be using. First, you need to run to the dungeon. The way I get there is the skills necklace to the farming guild and I run north to the new dungeon. If you do have the Xerix talisman, that is the quickest way to get there, but I do not have it. After getting there, follow this path to talk to Albertus. Once you are talking to him, either A, trade him 5 dragon stones, aka the easiest way to do it, or B, kill a monster for him and end up paying more later. After you give him the dragon stones, use the temple stone on this and then you need to use 100 dragon bones, I chose baby dragon bones because it's cheaper, on the bone burner. If you chose to instead kill the monster, you need to use 200 dragon bones on the bone burner. After you do that, you unlock the altar by the undead druids, which is the way we will be killing them, right here. Okay, now I will show you the method for undead druids. Now we are ready to kill the undead druids for major bank. Let's go ahead and look at the gear first that we will be using. We will be ranging them because if you're not in melee distance, they do only mage you, so we will be protecting from mage, and that's why the altar will be so helpful to us because we will not need to use prayer potions. So we are using the Armadillo Helmet, the Ava's Accumulator, Necklace of Anguish, Honorable Blessing, Toxic Blowpipe, Guthic's Dehyde Top, Guthic's Dehyde Chaps, Guthic's Bracers, Guthic's Dehyde Boots, and the Archer's Ring. Basically, this setup has a good amount of prayer bonuses and also has some good bonuses from the armadillo helmet giving us more range attack bonuses so you kind of want to balance that you could do full armadillo if you wanted to as well or full elite void but this setup will work as well and then in the inventory we have a ranging potion three lobsters in case we get attacked 1000 fire runes 500 nature runes so we can do high alchemy spells on the alchemical drops and then we also have the ring of dueling to teleport to clan wars in between trips to bank and to replenish our stats and then we also have the skills necklace six because that is how we will be getting there, because I do not have the Xerix Talisman. If you do have the Xerix Talisman, that would be an easier way to teleport there, but we will go ahead and teleport there, and go ahead and start and show you guys how to get there, and then we will explain what drops the Undead Druids have, and then how much money you can expect to make per hour. The Undead Druids drop Air Battle Staffs, Earth Battle Staffs, they also drop an assortment of runes, the valuable ones being Chaos Runes, Mud Runes, Cosmic Runes, Nature Runes, Law Runes, Death Runes, and Blood Runes. If you have a herb set, go ahead and bring it because they do drop loads of herbs. The notable ones that are worth picking up are the Renar Weeds, Irrit Leaves, Aventos, Quorms, Catatines, Landodimes, and Dwarf Weed. They also drop a bunch of seeds, but the ones worth picking up are the Snapgrass Seeds, the Renar Seeds, the Avento Seeds, and the Undead Druids also rarely drop the Snapdragon Seeds and the Torsal Seeds. Some interesting drops that are worth money that are somewhat commonly dropped are Noted Wines of Zamorak, Potato Cacti, Red Spider Eggs, and White Berries. They also drop Alkabal Amulets such as the Amulet of Magic, Defense, and Strength. They drop Coins as well, and a super rare item, the Mask of Ranol or Renewal, which is worth 45k and is a brand new item, only dropped from them. Overall, the drop table is very good for mid-levels, and you can make 4 100k an hour and if you do not do the max money per hour method and do use per potions you will make 100k an hour now time for the next method the next monster we will be doing is also in the new forthos dungeon it is the brand new spider boss serachnus if you have not done this boss before i will go over the mechanics just a little bit in this video but i do plan on doing an ultimate noobs guide to it in the future so look forward to that. If you do want to know how much money you can make from 100 kills, I did do an episode in a boss into a bill episode. Go ahead and check that out. The link will be in the description. 
but just so you know this is the gear we'll be using you do need a crush weapon so I'm using the abyssal bludgeon you can also use a leaf bladed battle axe if you cannot afford the bludgeon I'm using the Varax helm the obsidian cape amulet of torture honorable blessing bandos chestplate bandos tacits primordial boots region bracelet and the berserker ring in the inventory I am using four prayer potions because we will be praying the whole time a Carol's Leather Top Switch for when the Mage Minions come out, a Super Combat Potion, Stamina Potion to get there, Sharks to eat, my spec weapon is a Bandos God Sword, Skills Necklace to get there, and Clan Wars Teleport to get out. Now I will show you guys how to get there. Go ahead and use the Skills Necklace and teleport to the Woodcutting Guild and then run north to the same entrance we used before. Once inside, go ahead and follow this path. Make sure to use your Bandos God Sword to cut the webs or bring some sort of weapon or knife that can cut the webs. Once at the final web, turn your protect from range on until in melee distance and then attack the boss. I will briefly explain the mechanics, not in depth, but keep in mind I will make a guide on this boss specifically in the future. The boss attacks with melee when in melee distance and range when in range distance. The boss attacks around 3 times and then shoots a web attack. The web freezes you for a few seconds so you pray range until back in melee distance. Then 2 minions spawn when Stragnus is at 66% health and after at 33% health. During this time when the minions spawn, switch to the Carol's top to avoid the blue magic minions hits and then kill them as quickly and easily as you can. Then switch back to the Bando's chest plate and continue switching between melee and range prayers until Stragnus is dead. I feel it's important to explain that this boss was created to be a mid-level boss comparable to the difficulty of Barrows and also the same money per hour. The reason you will want to kill Stragnus is because it drops battle staffs, the rune plate body, rune medhelm, rune 2h sword, dragon medhelm, and the brand new crushing weapon, the Seracnus Cudgel, worth 860k. Seracnus also drops runes such as Chaos Runes, Soul Runes, Cosmic Runes, Death Runes, and Blood Runes. It also drops Mithril Arrows and Mithril Bolts. Additionally, the boss drops loads of seeds, with the valuable ones being Maple Seeds, Papaya Seeds, Yu Seeds, Snapdragon Seeds, and the Torso Seeds. Keep in mind, many of these seeds are rare to very rare. The boss also drops the majority of herbs and drops them notice as well. Seracnus also drops Mithril Ore, Red Dragon Hide, Adamant Ore, Runite Ore, and Onyx Bolt tips. Finally, Seracnus drops Dragon Bones, Coins, the Crystal Key, Grubby Keys, the Giant Egg Sack, Clue Scrolls, Jar of Eyes, and the new pet Soraka, Soraka, Sriracha, I don't know. If you kill Seracnus, you will make 700k plus GP an hour, making it a very good boss for money at mid-level combat, and also a fun boss to get used to boss mechanics. The next monster is often forgotten about when it comes to making money with combat. I am talking about Avian Seas. The Avian Seas we will be killing are located in the Wilderness God Wars dungeon, so make sure to only bring items you're willing to lose. There is one requirement and that is having either 60 strength or 60 agility to enter the dungeon all the way. The gear we'll be using needs to have one Zamorak item, one Armadil item, and one Ceridoman item. The reason for this is because we will be in the Wilderness God Wars dungeon and we don't want all the monsters to attack us the whole time. I'm using a Zamorak Coif, an Ava's Accumulator, the Necklace of Anguish, the Honorable Blessing, Toxic Blowpipe, Black Dehyde Body and Chaps, Ceridoman Bracers, snakeskin boots, and the Ring of Wealth as a level 30 teleport. In the inventory, we have 6 prayer potions, 2 ranging potions, sharks, a stamina potion to get there, and to run away in case we need to, a burning amulet to get there, and then also you can bring bones to peaches if you plan on camping these for a while. I also would highly recommend bringing a looting bag. Another way to make even more money at the avian seas in the wilderness is to use the crossbow, as it has a 50% accuracy and damage boost when in the wilderness, but the downside is it costs 200k to get the 1000 charges to activate it, and then you have to pay more for the charges after the original 1000 charges, making it cost around 300k minimum, and if you die you lose all the charges. If you have money to spend, definitely use the crossbow, but for the sake of the video, we will be using the toxic blowpipe. Okay, now I will show you guys how to get there. Go ahead and teleport to the bandit camp using the burning amulet, and then run north until you reach the dungeon sign. Make sure to set your quick prayers to protect from missiles so you're ready, and also drink a dose of your stamina potion. Then enter the cave and preferably use the entrance with the 60 strength requirement, which is the boulder. Then turn on your protect from missiles and attack the avian seas all around. This area is extremely dead and you will rarely see a PKer, but if you do, just log out, run out of the dungeon, or teleport. The avian seas drop nature runes, blood runes, chaos runes, herbs such as the ranar weeds, aventos, quorms, etc., runite limbs, and the most important drops that make you the most money are the common adamant bars that are noted and the rune dagger P+. They also drop the 
ecumenical key now due to a recent update and you can high elk the keys once you bank for 61.5k and they drop 1 in 60 kills so you will get quite a few while killing the avian seas for bank. If you decide to kill the avian seas you'll make 400k an hour. If you use the crossbow you can make 600k plus an hour at the avian seas. The next and fourth method in this video are worms. Worms are a newish monster that was released with the new Kevo's Lowlands update. The worms are located in Karend, and most people only do them for Slayer, and they do require level 62 Slayer to kill. These monsters can make great money and are quite easy to kill. We are going to be using range, but you can also use melee, and I definitely recommend using the Dragon Hunter Lance, as it does great damage to the worms. Unfortunately, we cannot use that with the alt account. We will be using Full Armadil on Avo's Accumulator, the Necklace of Anguish, an Honorable Blessing, the Toxic Blowpipe, Gothic Bracers because this account does not have Peros Gloves, the Archer's Ring, and Boots of Stone. You do have to wear the Boots of Stone, Granite Boots, or the Brimstone Boots to be able to walk in the area that we will be in. Also, you do not have to have full Armadil, you can simply use Black Dehyde as well. In the inventory, we have two Ranging Potions and four Prayer Potions because we will be praying Protect for Magic when we run out of food, and we are using Monkfish and the Skills Necklace to teleport there. I do recommend that you bring a Stamina Potion to run there as well. Now I will show you how to get there. Go ahead and use the Skills Necklace and teleport to the Farming Guild, and then run Northeast and follow the path that I take. Go down the entrance and head to the western rock and then jump over it, then follow the path and then start killing the worms. The worms use melee when in melee distance and magic when in range distance. After each inventory you can simply bank and re-gear at the bank that is at the top where the entrance was or you can bring a teleport out and run back each trip. The reason you want to kill worms is because they drop worm bones which are worth 1.3k and you can choose to pick them up and bank them or you can just go for more kills and not pick up the bones. The drops that they have are soul runes, blood runes, red dehyde chaff, Adamant Axe, Adamant Square Shield, Adamant Battle Axe, Adamant 2H Sword, Rune Medhelm, the Earth Battle Staff, Rune Battle Axe, and the Dragon Dagger. They also drop all of the herbs, and they drop a ton of seeds as well, but only pick up the Snapdragon, Snapegrass, and the Torso Seed. They drop coins as well, and also the Rune Arrow Tips and Adamant Arrow Tips. They do have a very rare chance of dropping the Dragon Sword, Dragon Harpoon, Dragon Knife, and the Dragon Thorn Axe, so if you get those, you will definitely boost your money per hour. If you decide to kill worms, you will make 300k an hour, which is actually really good, and keep in mind, this is only 62 Slayer, and you can definitely get to 62 Slayer pretty easily. The last method is the crazy archaeologist. This is a demi boss in the wilderness so only bring what you are willing to lose. I do highly recommend being able to use the Ivan staff which requires the underground pass quest. As of now my alt only has 55 magic and it has not done the underground pass. The trident or Ivan staff will definitely boost your money per hour and make this easier but if I can do it with 55 magic and earth blast you can do it too. The crazy archaeologist is a fun boss to do especially if you are new to bossing. The gear we will be using is the mystic hat, an arbiter cape, feel free to use a magic cape instead, the Amulet of Glory because we cannot use the Occult yet, an Honorable Blessing, the Dust Battle Staff, Monk Rope Top and Bottom, the Tome of Fire with no burnt pages for some extra magic bonuses, the Combat Bracelet, Mystic Boots, and a Ring of Dueling. The inventory has 4 Prayer Potions, Sharks, and Karambons, a Stamina Potion, a Burning Amulet, and Death Runes for Earth Blast. Now I will show you how to get there, go ahead and teleport to the Bandit Camp using your Burning Amulet, and then run north and slightly west until you find the Archaeologist. Then pray range the entire time and make sure to be out of melee distance. Make sure to move at least 3 tiles away every time the archaeologist says reign of knowledge or you will get killed really quick. The crazy archaeologist drops the amulet of power, red dehyde body, rune knives, rune crossbow, mud runes, dragon arrows, grimy dwarf weeds, sharks, prayer potions, and coins. The demi boss also drops cannonballs, the muddy key, red dragon hide noted, white berries noted, the onyx bolt tips, and it also rarely drops the Odium Shard 2 and Malediction Shard 2, which are both well over 500k, even pushing 1 mil each. If you do Crazy Archaeologist with low magic and no Iben Staff, you will make 350k an hour, but if you do have the Iben Staff and decent to high magic level, you will make 500k plus an hour. That brings us to the end of the video. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please leave a like and also subscribe because I will be making more low level money makers with combat, and also I will start making high level money makers with combat on my main, so look forward to that. If you have any suggestions for future 
low level monsters or high level monsters, leave a comment and I will definitely test it out. Also, I have a clan chat that has a lot of PVMers that are looking for others to boss with or just hang out. It is just my username Heartblitz, so definitely join that if you're interested. Again, please subscribe and leave a like. Also join the Discord, the link is in the description. Thanks guys for watching, stay tuned for my next video.